Welcome to Hardware Asylum. Normally this video would be a continuation on that Baby AT chassis that I just recently repaired. I'll put a link in the uh, show notes and in the top or whatever so you can go check that out. And obviously the next video in that series would be you know something like me putting that system together so that we could actually see what we're going to be dealing with. But unfortunately during a little bit of prep work I realized that our commander P 6i440FX motherboard that I showed earlier, uh, it had a fault. Now it wasn't a fault right away because I was using it. But it turns out that when I had it hooked up, you know, because we got memory and heatsink on here, had video cards installed, I had everything working, and I was just installing some extra stuff for the operating system, it just shut off. And I was like, I'm not sure what that is. So I went and tried to power back on. Still did the same thing. It kind of powered up, acted like it was going to do something, then shut off again. But it was pretty immediate. And I'm thinking to myself, I recognize what that problem is, and that is an OCP. An OCP is an overcurrent protection. Basically, we have a short. Most modern power supplies have overcurrent protection and several other protections built in. I was using an ATX power supply on this with an adapter. So to make those ATX power supplies work on an AT style motherboard, you need to use an adapter like this. And what it does is it takes the 20 pin ATX connector, breaks it down into the dual eight pins that go to the power connector here on the motherboard. Now, if you've seen videos like this before, it will tell you that the black wires need to be together. If you reverse it, you put voltages down where there shouldn't be voltages. And that's where we are right now. So what we're gonna do is quickly diagnose what the problem is. We'll just basically pull out our, our meter and find out which one of these power rails is shorted, figure out how to fix the fault and uh, repair this board. Now, obviously based on the equipment you see on the bench, I have a pretty good idea of what the problem is, but uh, we'll just go through the diagnostic process. So we're going to put my meter on tone, basically when we have a short, we'll hear a beep. We can also do ohmage, but um, for an OCP, that's basically, like I said, a short. And that's where we're gonna have a power rail going to ground. Now, as I mentioned before, this connector has black wires in the middle, and is basically two on the left connector, two on the right connector, so those should be in the center here. And we can go and find those real quick. So those are our four. It doesn't matter which one of these we pick because they're pretty much a common ground. So what we'll do is pick the outside. There's our grounds. Start over here. Nope. That's not good. So we pick this ground, then we'll go to the other side. Nothing, 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 and ground. So now if we look on our connector, that is going to be the blue wire. Blue wire is negative 12 volts. And what we can do from here is trace where that goes and maybe there's a component or a scratch or something on the PCB. So let's go take a look. Let's go ahead and get reoriented here. So the one that is shorted is negative 12 volts, which is on third one over. So one, two, three. Should be this one. One, two, three, four. And if we follow that, that's this heavy trace right here. Goes to this component. Short it across. And that component is this tentalum capacitor right here. So the plan here is to desolder that capacitor. And then we're going to go ahead and check for shorts again to make sure that there's no others in the line. We're going to replace it with the capacitor that we got. And then we can fire up the board and check to see if we boot. 
I'm going to try to bring you in close so you can see what I'm doing, but there are other YouTubers out there that have done this exact same thing, so I'm sure that anyone watching this, this is not a new process to them. I personally like to break out the magnifying glass so I can see what I'm doing. Sorry we don't have a budget for a microscope, but you know, if you like and subscribe, maybe that will happen. There's a chance that this might be a free solder, so let's use that. There it goes. Well, it's jump cut time and a bit of an explanation. So, I removed the capacitor up here. When I metered that one out, it indicated that it was shorted. However, it appears to be a conditioning capacitor between the negative 12 volt rail and the ground plane. So of course it's going to seem like it's shorted because we have ground on one side and the power on the other. So then I started tracing the negative 12 volt rail. The first way is out of the pin and it follows this trace to this location where that conditioning capacitor was. The other direction goes from the pin down here and then follows this path and it becomes a power rail for all of the expansion slots. And as you know, negative 12 volts is used for expansion slots. It basically goes down each one of these. So at various points there is a via and here are some right here. The middle one is our negative 12 volt rail and basically where that via is, it's going to take the power and move it to a different layer in the PCB. On modern motherboards like the Gigabyte Z790X that are reviewed on Hardware Asylum, the middle layers are where they run the memory traces. So they can run really super fast memory and not have a lot of external interference from EMI and also the other traces that are on the board. Same thing is happening here, however it's just basically going from that via to another conditioning capacitor. So we have one here, that one's gone, and we have another one down here is also gone. So I metered these ones out as well and it turns out that both of these were acting a little funny so I removed them from circuit. Turns out the conditioning capacitor at the very top was good. The capacitor here was also good. The capacitor here was dead. One thing I like about my meter is that it will test capacitance. We just go and put it in capacitor mode. It'll tell me that I have 23 farads. Now if I test the one that's dead, you'll see that nothing comes up. Now before we cut the legs off, let's do a continuity test and see if we got rid of our dead short. We're looking for a beep. No more beep. Grounds. Beep. I think we fixed it. I'll go ahead and get this cleaned up and when we come back we'll fire it up. Okay, we're all set up here. Now obviously there is a chance that additional capacitors could break and we might go into another overcurrent protection situation or Something might flare up and we might lose the entire board. But we fixed the fault best I could tell. Let's go ahead and flip the switch and see what happens. And we have life. We have a beep.
We have text on the monitor. Pinion Pro 200 is counting up our memory. We should have 256 or 262 according to the counter. And now that I have a working system, again, I can get back to setting up the build. Make sure that the hardware works the way that it's supposed to. And then we can start assembling this build and get the Pentium put back into the new old stock, new old stock system. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next one.